Hey, and welcome to another Dynasty Empire Blender video. So today I'm going to be covering an add-on that my friend Ethan Simon has been working on, uh, based off of a workflow that I came to him uh, that I would like to automate inside of Blender. So it's been a while since I last uploaded a video, and this is one of the things I've been doing besides moving house and changing job. So I'm going to walk you guys through the add-on, and then I'm going to start showing you what I've done with it so far and the potential of what you could do with it inside of Blender as well. So starting with an empty project, if I just delete everything in here and just all we need is a 3D view for this. The add-on is called the GrabDoc add-on. So if any of you are familiar with the GrabDoc feature inside of uh, ZBrush, it's essentially that, but this is for creating trims and tiles inside of Blender's viewport. And on top of that, we have a one-click bake uh, setting for the uh, in order to bring your meshes inside of Marmoset to make sure if you if you really want to make sure that the bake is 100% accurate. Uh, Marmoset is best known for that. Or if you just want to be quick about it, our results inside of Blender are accurate enough that you can just hit export and it will export all the buffers, your curvature, AO, uh, material ID, and height. And it's uh, everything there is set up uh, purely so you can see these buffers inside the viewport whilst you're working on things and preview them and change their strength. So that's enough talking about it. I'm about to show you it. So when you first up, start up the grab doc add-on, you'll be greeted with the setup scene setting here. This will be the only button. So just click that and then you'll be greeted with the actual add-on itself. So there's two things you can see here that have been spawned inside of the viewport. One is a plane and the second is a camera. And the reason that there's a camera set up is that whatever is inside this area that this plane takes up, uh, is viewable by the camera. They match each other one to one. And that's what you've got to fit your tileable, uh, or trim inside. So you can hit zero on the numpad to view inside the camera view, or you can hit the view camera trim, uh, view trim camera here, and that'll just snap you inside and out. Additionally, let's go from top down to bottom. You can refresh the scene if you have any issues. Uh, there's a ceiling which controls the height of the camera. Uh, the default is five meters. Then there's scaling, which you can match the resolution of whatever you put in, or you can hit set. And you can, if you want to make a tileable take up four by four meters, you can just set this to four and you can see everything will update for you. So I'm just going to leave it at two. Uh, there's grid, which will allow you to uh, subdivide the grid for splitting up your tileable or trim, uh, just kind of as guides. Uh, it can be useful. Um, it's just a simple setting that's there if you need it. There's manually pick rendered, which will create a collection. And then that will, uh, whatever you put inside this collection is only what GrabDoc will render when you hit export. So that's a really useful thing as well for managing your scene. Um, but we also have it so it tries to automatically detect what's inside the area as well, uh, even on export into my set. And then in the baker settings, even though we don't really bake inside Blender, we just export based off of the viewport. We have the path where you want to send. We have your the name of the file, uh, the resolution, uh, file types. We only support PNG, TIFF, and TGA. Although if you want to go into uh, Marmoset, it supports PNG at the moment. Uh, then there's compression here, which you can set to none or 15. Blender's compression is actually really good, so you shouldn't see any artifacting, even if you use compression. Uh, and then you can toggle whether you want the folder to pop up when you export. So here's the view map settings, and this is kind of where we get into the meat of things. So let's click normal, and it'll automatically snap us into the view, and it'll set up the material. And right now you can see that there's nothing here except a flat normal. Um, we can flip the Y if you want to go from uh, Blender is OpenGL by default, and then you can flip Y and that'll be DirectX. You can leave the map view at any time. So if I add a cube to the scene and scale it down, and then let's just bevel this, give it a profile, give it some subdivs and set it to smooth. And now let's go back to the normals tab. You can see that it's rendering the normals of this mesh inside uh, inside the camera area. And if I flip the Y, you can see that happen in real time. This is good for previewing everything and making sure that your normals look all right before exporting. 
And if you did want to export, if you have it all set up, I'll just set it to uh, a folder I've set up on my desktop. So grab that tutorial. Hit accept once you've gone to the folder and then I'm going to change the name here. I'm going to call this normal test and simply resolution dialed in 2048 by 2048. It's kind of clipped here due to the uh, scale of the window. PNG 16 bit and can play with whatever compression you want. Uh, if you change any settings, it tries to take you out of the uh, the modal for viewing these uh, so you don't cause any errors inside of Blender because Blender can be temperamental. Uh, but you can just always clip back in and then if I just want to export this, I'm going to go open folder and export it as well. Export. And then you can see this normal here. And this should be an open gel normal based off of the geometry that you see in the scene that it should be fine for you to bring into wherever you need to bring it for baking. You can see some uh, demos here. I'll be going to those a little bit later. And you could see some faceting in the material before. So let's uh, just increase the subdivisions and make sure that our Render is set high enough as well. So if we set this to three, render is whatever your uh, subdivision will export as when you hit render. So let's do that again. And you'll see that we got rid of that fast thing now. So uh, that's another thing I just did without showing is uh, you can at any point, you can just click this and it will make a quick render inside of Blender's viewport. Uh, for normals at the moment, this is a little bit broken just for previewing. Uh, it'll export the normal fine, but there's a bit of an issue with sRGB when you're previewing the normal, but everything else should be fine. So let's get back to the view and show that other things work as well. So let's duplicate this. And uh, let's view curvature. We have settings here for tweaking the intensity of the curvature. Again, based off the geometry, and there's also valleys. Uh, it's not going to be useful in a scene like this at the moment. The preview, same for ambient occlusion, for the real time. You can change the intensity and preview what your ambient occlusion is going to look like when you export it, change the max distance. So everything is uh, already set up here for you to just click, use, and then export when you need. Same thing for height. There's auto, uh, which will uh, or try and automatically guess the height of everything you have in the area. So if we leave the map preview, we can uh, go height and then set it to manual if you want. And you can see that there's now a volume that that shows you what the max height is uh, based off of the auto. And then you can also tweak that. So now if I go back to the camera view and now we're clipping because we're below the max height of the cubes. But if we turn this up, you'll see we can now tweak this and essentially view it in real time as well. And for complex materials, normals, uh, your height information can get quite detailed. So just being able to see that and make sure that everything is set properly, uh, that's also very powerful and useful. And this also automatically set up, uh, sets up your height clip plane for when you want to, if you want to export into Marmoset. So let's just delete these. There's also one more thing uh, in here called flat mask. Let me just... Uh, auto reset the height as well, auto. That'll make sure that the max height value is at the max uh, range for you to export the height at. Just try and keep on top of that at all times. Additionally, there's flat mask if you want to export a mask. So this is also really useful if you really wanted, uh, quickly wanted to uh, model a uh, an alpha inside of Blender or even just some quick uh, height or normal information to stamp onto your meshes inside of Substance Painter. Uh, that's all doable in this. So we also view the normals. That mask should match these normals perfectly. And it's all just based off of the geometry inside of this camera area. And then we also have Material ID, which isn't going to be very useful unless I have more meshes inside the scene. So let's just make a bunch of these. And you can see it's already trying to make a random material a uh, random color per object. And that's just using the uh, random color setting inside of Blender's viewport. But you can set it to either from random color in this to material. And you'll see everything's the same material at the moment. All you have to do is click ID material setup and you can just keep toggling this until you're happy. And we'll automatically assign a 
uh, material or random material to every mesh in your scene. And that this is just purely based off of the, 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 how meshes are separated from each other. So let's leave that. Uh, D we've done height, uh, again, flat mask is still working or we can go height. So you can see that that's still working. Quick preview, the AO curvature normals, and then so let's show you the marmoset export, just using what I have in the viewport at the moment before I start showing you material that I've actually just quickly sculpted up. This is uh, the material that I'm about to show is a benchmark material. So let's just, all you have to do is in here, you find the path to wherever your marmoset viewer is based. So for me, that's my local disk. And then it should be program files. Uh, I'm blind at the moment, there you go at the top. And then mama set toolbag three and then toolbag.exe. And then that should be your mama set path. And then all there is here is some settings to play around with. You, if you want it to close mama set after baking, um, auto bake. Uh, so this essentially acts if you have auto bake off, it won't bake the seam and it brings it into mama set, but it will import the scene into mama set. So that's also useful. Uh, the amount of rays that AO uh, we'll bake with and the sampling. So let's just do a quick bake. Um, I haven't saved this project yet, but I'll leave that. So let's go bake and mama set. And then let's watch it do its thing. This takes a little bit longer to export than if you just exported directly out of Blender. So whilst you're modeling and iterating on your, uh, on your scene or your trim and you have something to test it with, uh, you can see it's automatically set everything up here. So we have the curvature AO. Uh, I haven't smoothed the, uh, the normals yet, so you can see it's actually uh, still showing the faceting of the mesh, uh, which isn't great. But again, since it's already in Blender, I can make sure that the mesh is smooth to get rid of that. And so we have no more issues. So you can see it's created uh, the ID maps for the high at the moment, the high poly. So we go to the baker that it's set up with high and low. So it's all in here. So let's say if you didn't want to go the marmoset route and you just wanted to export from Blender, once you're happy with all of the settings you've got here for your AO strength and your normals and everything, you can just, once you have your path set, just hit export. Uh, I'm just exporting occlusion right now, but let's leave the occlusion view and then go export maps and I'll export all of the maps that we have ticked here. So you can toggle which maps to export. So now you can see directly out of Blender, we have also uh, exported everything we need in order to bring it into Substance Painter and start texturing. So now all the basic feature showcases are out the way. Let me show you an example of a scene that I have made for uh, baking and testing this. This is our benchmark scene, essentially. You don't have to sculpt anything this detailed. Um, it's all down to whatever workflow suits you best. But as you can see here, this inside the Blender viewport is 48.5 million tries. And I've been able to sculpt this fine with no issues. In fact, I'm not even using any custom brushes. It's just been displacement for the noise. It's been just the, the trim brush to get the shaping I want and just standard sculpting workplace. But you can import your own alphas into Blender and do some crack sculpting, uh, well, like sculpt cracks by just using like drag dot and placing a cracks alpha over something to subtract. Um, all of your standard kind of ZBrush sculpting stuff is there to be set up. You just need to have the alphas on hand to do that. Since by default, Blender doesn't really have any setup. But again, this is our stress, uh, stress test scene. So if I click normals, we can preview the normals for export. It's just going to take a while to update since, as I said, 48.5 million tries. It just is going to slow things down when switching materials and such complex meshes. So we can preview those uh, real time and test if we want to have it as OpenGL or DirectX. Then we can leave. Same thing. It's going to be a bit slower, but we can preview the curvature and the settings here. So what they look like. Uh, I've already walked you guys through all of these. Um, the next thing I actually want to show you is essentially how you can set things up for making things tile properly inside of Blender as well. So as you can see, I've got this. Uh, I'll, let's choose a piece here. So let's choose. Let's just choose this long one. So if I just isolate this one piece, you can see 
There's details sculpted in here, but they're tiling. And Blender supports sculpting uh, on tiled objects by default. So if I go into sculpt mode on this mesh, you can see it's quite a dense mesh. It's uh, already 24 million uh, tries, uh, but everything's being handled pretty well by Blender. So let's go back up top. And then under our sculpt settings, we can come down to symmetry here. And I've already set my tiling here. Since this only tiles on the X, I don't need to worry about the Y. I've set the tiling to X. And then since this area is four by four meters, I've set the tile offset for the X to four. So now if you see, I uh, have two areas, two markers on where I'm sculpting. So let's use the scrape brush and just sculpt some details where you can kind of go nuts. I'm not using my tablet, so this isn't going to look good. Uh, but let's say I want to just quickly sculpt over this detail here. So let's go back to sculpt mode. Let's see if my tablet is going to give me problems if I grab my pen. There we go. So now I have my mouse back and Blender does have just standard uh, viewport like navigation using your middle mouse settings for rotation and everything like that. Let's go back to top view and let's just say I wanted to quickly just redress this area. And there we go. So once you set things up in your viewport and you get it to how you like it for, you know, tiling is going to work on a mesh. There you go. Whatever I sculpted here, it has happened exactly the same over here. I wouldn't recommend details like this, but uh, since it'll make tiling more obvious, since this is quite different to everything else there. Uh, let's just keep it at that, actually. So now let's uh, unisolate everything. And that's using the forward slash key. And you can see I've done the same thing with a lot of things here. And for uh, when it comes to exporting the tile levels, I've made sure that above the area of the camera, so let's just show the camera again. Uh, above the area and below the area, I've also duplicated the, uh, the geometry down. Uh, in fact, this is a direct duplication in the mesh. Um, you don't actually have to do that. Uh, you can use an array modifier if you don't want to have to also uh, duplicate and then drag it down to match. Um, I'm also using a displace on this since it's such high poly. Uh, I'm just using a noise texture. Um, so if I turn that off, you can see it goes from smooth to having that noise detail and uh, to just add some microservice detail breakup, essentially. So let's also add that array. And then let's just set it to constant offset, so which will use the, uh, the viewport scaling. Um, and as long as your mesh scaling is set to one by control A and applying your rotation and scale. So there's no, no offsetting, there won't be any issues. Um, let's export this on the minus Y since we want to bring it down. So minus four meters on the Y. And you'll see we have the exact same mesh duplicated four meters on the Y. So now if I want to do the same for this uh, piece here. Let's shift select and then go control L and then link the modifiers between them. And that way it'll copy the modifiers of the last one I selected. And again, it's now arrayed. So setting up uh, tiled objects inside of Blender is super easy, and then sculpting on them uh, is easy as well. Every All the workflows I've just shown you, as simple as they were, just there for sculpting and for sculpting and arraying objects, they just, they're just they built into Blender. They already work, so creating tileables and trims like this uh, isn't too much of an issue. So let me open the Substance Painter file, which is just based off of the exported maps from the scene we were just looking at. Here I am with some smart materials I've just been working on. This is based off of the jade material in here if you wanted to make a jade stone temple. And then this one here is more of a stylized view, uh, a stylized material for, uh, but more rough, so it has less reflections. And I think Alex Beddoes, uh, on his podcast, he's a really talented material artist and a good friend of mine. Uh, he's talked a few times about uh, how hand sculpted materials sometimes especially on the stylized side they often feel much more authentic and uh, like purposeful than something that you do in designer for instance and additionally in our workflows uh, standard 3d workflows if we wanted to 
make a hard surface trim, um, a lot of the time, most people will just model that. So I had a workflow idea of how to create this. I went to my friend Ethan and he uh, took the ideas that I gave him and he just ran with this. So you can grab this uh, this add-on on his store. It's called GrabDoc. The link will be in the description. Um, I hope you guys find some use for this. Uh, additionally, all the tileables and material example files I'm going to be making over the next week and uh, week and a half or so. Uh, those all will be going up on my art station and my art station store. You'll be able to grab them for free. So I look forward to seeing what everyone does with this add-on. Uh, it's been a blast working on this. Ethan blew it out the park with all the features that are available. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy the add-on. Thanks for watching.